We're not done with negative words. In this section, we're going to go over none, nothing, not exist, refuse, unable, and other related items. Here's our models for our negative words. There's none. Oh, no. Oh, no. There was none. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Was there nothing? Oh, no. Oh, no. There is no money. Oh, no, Tala. Oh, no, Tala. I have no money. Oh, no, Tala. Oh, no, Tala. I don't know it. Oh, no, Skchit. Oh, no, Skchit. There was no school. Oh, no, yes, school. Oh, no, yes, school. There was nobody. Oh, no, yes, son. Oh, no, yes, son. The word ne in Kuala means exist, come into existence, be born, be some. When this combines with awa, it forms a special com compound, awana, which means nothing, none, or not exist. Uh, is really a verb meaning to be nothing or to not exist. It's possible to say awana, you don't exist or you're nothing. When the word following awana has a possessive pronoun on it, the translation often includes have no as in awana nes, as in awana neskaha, I have no dog. Here are some new words to go over. Chai, work, chai, my uk, forget. Ha ha remember school school a word borrowed by Klala from English and san san somebody the word san can also mean who ten point one oh no Dallas sense jack jack oh no try oh yeah sense jack jack to the next part. Not accept, refuse, or reject. In each of the examples, oh, let's listen to our models for this section. So I refuse it. Um, I refuse the canoe. I am refused. And the man refuses the canoe. And you refuse me. Each of these examples can be replaced by reject or some other version of not accept, such as I don't accept it, I'm not accepted, the man does not accept the canoe, and so on. Um, when Awa has a suffix T, X with the raised W, it becomes a transitive verb, meaning refuse something or somebody, or not accept something or somebody. This suffix is called a causative suffix. And last but not least, for our negative words, skiam is one negative word that doesn't use a form of awa. Some speakers pronounce this as a skiam, which is the basic careful pronunciation. The more common casual form is used here. The meaning of skiam includes ideas like unable, no good, so skiam sin could also mean I'm unable to do it, or I'm useless for something, or I'm no good at it. If you want to say that something is no good or useless, use the skiam as the verb and the thing that is no good or useless as a subject preceded by any of the particular specific articles, such as sa, for example, skiam, if you want to get a cross idea of can't or not able, use ski um as one of the main verb. And the thing that cannot be done as a subject preceded by chi, the not particular article.
If the meaning is can't or not able, you must use the possessive pronoun on the word after chi to indicate who is unable. For example, skiam chi, tiash, we can't go. Ski um, is used with awa to form a very useful and interesting phrase. Ski um, chi, and awa, I have to. This literally means I cannot. Ski um, chi, and awa, yeah, means I have to go, or literally, I can't not go. This can be generally used if you change the hia to some other verb. And of course, you can change it from I to you and so on. So, for example, you can say, Skiamchi and Sawat's hia. Skiamchi Sawat's hia. Skiamchi Sawat's quanting it. Skiamchi and Sawat hai stuk. This pattern has a very common S prefix. When a verb has a possessive pronoun, it must have an S prefix. The S has no other meaning or function. It just has to be there if a verb has a possessive pronoun. So, skiam chi and skia, I can't go. The verb hia cannot just take the na, my prefix, without the S. So pay close attention when this S is used in the exercises. And on to our Quinawi. Hia ut ata skiamchi in sia. Skiam ut sa in strukwayush. Ow, kunang it dan sa dan. Subscribe, like, and comment. If you have any questions, please contact me via email at harmony.arakawa at lwa.org.